Welcome to Mono Lake, California. Mono Lake has a really big, rich geologic history and legal history. Let's talk about the geology first. Mono Lake is a wonder in geological terms. Sitting at about 6,400 feet above sea level, the water here is two and a half times more salty than the ocean. This is kind of an endoheric uh, basin where all the water flows in, but it has no natural way to flow out. So the only way it doesn't overfill and overflow its boundaries is because of the surface evaporation. That is how it maintains its equilibrium. And not the only thing that can live in this kind of environment are brine shrimp and alkali flies. They live 90% of their time underwater in a larva stage, and then they uh, sprout wings and they fly around, and then the birds feast upon them during the uh, uh, egg laying season. There's only not that many alkali flies out today, just a few little scattered clouds here and there. But during the <laughs> intense season, when they pop out, they are everywhere and the birds do feast. Now let's talk about these geological formations in the background. They're called tufa columns. Tufa column. T-U-F-A. You can see the little, over here, the little tall, like, tree-looking uh, structures. They're made out of limestone. And tufas typically form along fault lines. Whenever you find fault lines in this lake, you're likely to find tufas. And why is that important? Well, the tufas grow around volcanic vents under the ground. So when the water from underground comes up, the highly calcified water, it mixes with this salt water, which is kind of carbonic. It's a, this lake is a saline soda lake. It mixes with the uh, carbonates in the water and forms limestone. All these tufas, these little columns, are just like fossil springs. Now, usually these tufas, when they were created, they were all underwater. And this brings me to the legal history of Mono Lake. Back in the day, when uh, Los Angeles was growing into a very large metropolitan area, they were running out of water. So a guy by the name of William Mulholland, he's the brain trust behind this craziness, he decided to drain all the water out of Owens Valley, so he built the world's longest gravity-fed aqueduct. Before William Mulholland got a hold of Mono Lake, the water level was 40 foot higher, right over the top of the tufas. And the size of the lake was almost twice the size of it is now. But when he got his hands into it, when he started draining this whole valley, they didn't drain the lake, he drained the water flowing into the lakes. We'll take a look at what he did to Lake Owens. And this is all that's left of Owens Lake. The only thing left after Los Angeles diverted all the water is the salt coyote tracks and roadrunner tracks. This used to be a lush, large lake with a very healthy uh, outer forest ringing the lake. It was a nesting site for uh, California gulls, numerous other birds. It was an extravaganza of nature. And now it's a salt pit. Currently you can see the little hay bales in the back. They deployed hay bales all in this area to keep uh, the sand from blowing away, to help keep what's here from blowing away. It's a task that you're forever going to be fighting off the devastation. This is what an imbalanced ecosystem looks like. This is what an uh, ecosystem that has been ravaged by water diversion looks like. This is the remnants. This is the carcass. Water diversion in California is a huge issue. Uh, in the San Joaquin Valley, you know, I've covered uh, other issues concerning uh, water and drought, and here we have the same thing. Drinking water diverted from the uh, Sierra Mountains, the Sierra Nevada Mountains, to Los Angeles. 
through one of the longest uh, aqueducts in the world. It's all downhill from here to L.A. And this is the glorious devastation that's left behind. We've got to stop doing this to the planet. We live here. We've got to start taking care of it. I mean, yeah, you know, draining the lake did create jobs. The town we just went through through Keller it's part ghost town part deserted third world country yeah salt mining that's not a career no one goes to school for salt mining no one improves their their uh, lot in life with salt mining only thing left here now is to just manage the devastation and remember, William Mulholland is the brilliant guy that was actually going to dam Yosemite Valley and capture all that water. But at least he did take the time and hire some artists and some photographers to take pictures of the Yosemite Valley before it was absolutely destroyed by his uh, water-thirsty friends and his water-thirsty business. But the only reason Mono Lake is still here is because of the uh, Mono Lake Committee. Down below are some links to the wonderful work they've done here to preserve at least what's left of Mono Lake. And it took a lot of work to preserve what we're left with. I mean, this is one of the most gorgeous, I mean, it's still a gorgeous lake, but the water that was going in here is now going to Los Angeles. And, and that's why, for me, I believe Mono Lake is the last remnant of a stable ecosystem. What's here is all, all that's left. You know, the Owens River Valley had multiple lakes. Now they're all salt flats. They're used industrially. It was a thriving place with riparian forest, bird, waterfowl, wildlife. I mean, just a little bit ago, we saw a bald eagle flying over the uh, lake. Imagine what it was before William Mulholland got a hold of it. But this is all that's left of a destroyed ecosystem, is Mono Lake. And if you're ever coming around, please come by and visit. You will, you will be glad you did. But if you're ever through here, please take time to visit. Visit the uh, Mono Lake Committee uh, Visitor Center. Learn about the history of what it took to keep what was here, at least what was left. They did amazing work of saving what was left of an ecosystem. And that's it here from Mono Lake, California. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, please subscribe. If you got any questions, just drop those in the comments below. And until next time, I'll be your lab partner. Take care. Goodbye.